Hi, I'm Dr. Satish Kumar and this is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed. Today on our Kaizen Dental Success Stories podcast, we have with us Dr. Nida Sumra, who's going to tell us about her journey of practicing as a periodontist in Dubai after completing her PDS and MDS in India. Dr. Nida Sumra completed her BDS from Maharashtra University of Health Sciences and then completed her Masters in Periodontics from Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences. Since 2015, she had her own private practice in Mumbai and worked as a consultant periodontist across various clinics and hospitals. After six years, she cleared her DHA exam and is currently practicing as a periodontist at the Dome Med Dental Clinic. Hi, Dr. Nida. Thank you for taking your time out to come and answer these questions, which will help young dentists who are planning to take the route you have taken. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me to have this talk. Yeah. So the first question is, you cleared your exam in one go. So yes. how difficult or easy is the DHA exam? See, basically it all goes to your basics. So when I started studying for my exam, I didn't go for any new books available in the market for MCQs, how we, you know, students rush to get the latest book in the market. I started with the basics. So I cleared my perio licensing exam, okay, specialist perio. Yes. So I started with Karanza because that is what I read in my undergraduation. So I was sure that if I read it again, it will be much easier for me to comprehend. And also the passing marks, I'm very sure is not 100 on 100. So out of 100, 70 or 60 is basic, right? So even if you clear the basics, you will clear the exam. So first is go through what you already know rather than, you know, learning something new. So I think that is why I could clear the exam in the first go is because I didn't go for some high-end textbooks or the new MCQs. I just read Karanza in and out again, like one, one sentence of Karanza. And then after that, I just looked some clinical cases. So it helped. So if you don't confuse your mind with the new textbooks and, you know, your focus if is not on to go through the maximum number of MCQs because in the mind of students who are appearing for the exam, it is like, you know, it is multiple choice questions. I will only read multiple choice questions, but it is more like, you know, you have to know your uh, theory before going for the MCQs. So if you know your theory, the MCQs will be easier. But if you will read like 10,000 MCQs and if you don't know your theory, the MCQs are definitely going to change. There is not a set pattern that the same questions will be repeated. But those questions will be asked from your theory. So if you know your theory, the MCQs are automatically easy. So it is more of knowing your theory rather than, you know, reading the maximum number of MCQs because reading the MCQs will only confuse you more. And you understand that you don't know anything. So do you think any coaching or something is necessary or self-study no. is more than adequate? No, no coaching is required. No coaching, absolutely. Because if I require a coaching, that is the first barrier for anyone to even think of attempting it. Because see, I cleared my MDS in 2015. In 2020, I even thought of going to Dubai. If I had the thing in mind, ke, yaar, I need some coaching. So I wouldn't have done it. I'm like, in COVID, where I will get coaching from? understood so, so now once you clear your exams there okay mm -hmm. uh was it easy to find a job and you went at the time during covid so See, how was it um, it's not easy to find a job what works over here is that your experience in your home country. Because see, if you plan for other countries like Canada, US, they have exams in parts. First part is a theoretical and second part is a clinical. So they are testing your clinical skills. But when you come to Dubai, there is no clinical exam. Okay, there is only theoretical exam. So how they will assess your clinical capabilities is only after your experience. So if you're experienced enough, so they know that uh, since the DHA criteria does not give you uh, this thing of passing a clinical exam, so but the DHA wants a certain number of years in your home country. So they say it is three years after your specialization or your general dentistry, okay? So for example, 
I'm getting very confusing right now. See, if you are only BDS, okay, so they need three years experience in your home country, and then you can appear for the general dentistry licensing exam of DHA. Understood. Suppose if you are perio, but even after perio, you need three years to practice as a perio. But if you think of giving exam immediately after your perio, so then your three years of masters will be considered experience of general dentistry. So then, immediately so then you can after, apply as a general dentist. General dentist, not as a perio. But I had an experience of five years even after perio, so I applied for perio. So finding I'm the sure. job depends only about on how many experience you had in your home country. They will actually look at that. So they don't do any testing of skills or any special no. things they look into? No, they will just look at your resume, your number of years. Because see, here you are not competing only with dentists of your own country. You're competing dentists with all over the world. So even if you're applying for a particular position, there are dentists from Europe, US, Canada, Australia applying for the same job. So what will help you to compete with them is your experience and how confident are you and how well presented are you in, you know, putting forward your experience understood so it's basically how well your interview goes and how much experience you have these are the major yes. two criteria yes definitely okay. definitely so you have worked for a lot of years in india after you finish your masters yes five so years. have you seen any major difference in the working styles in india and dubai definitely first is legalities okay see i am not here to compare to countries but you all know that legalities in india are relaxed Okay, and also the amount of money involved. See, the patients do not pay you huge amount of money for the treatment. Okay, so even if you uh, do not do a treatment well, and if some things go wrong, there are no lawyers or any kind of issues involved, and uh, there are no certain guidelines, or you do not get a uh, ins uh, insurance kind of a thing in which they are checking what treatment you have done or the licensing authority like DCI coming in your clinic and checking your records of what you're doing to the patient. But over here, you have, you know, every year you have licensing uh, exams in the sense that the DHA comes and actually checks your patients as simple as, you know, they will even check whether you have updated the medical history of the patient, whether adequate number okay. of radiographs are taken because the money involved is more. The patients expect you a certain level of treatment and that should be delivered because they are paying and the legalities here are very strong. And plus, especially in Dubai, you are interacting with patients from almost every nationality. So there is not a single way of approach in which you will talk to the patient. So to negate this, the DHA has made a criteria. You have to follow it. If you do not follow it, I don't know, your license can be taken or maybe you won't be able to practice surgeries if I'm not doing well with surgeries. So there is a huge approach because of the money involved and the legalities. It is. Understood. So how is the salary there? Are you earning better than what you're earning in India or is it the same? See, if you'll take the currency translation, definitely I'm earning better. Okay. But since I had a clinic back home and if I compare the salary, because I've just started, it's been like six months over a year. So it's good. It's definitely good because it's the starting salary of mine over here is what I would have earned there after five years. Okay. Okay. So it's definitely good. But then again, it depends on how are you coming to the money with relatives or you're alone. So there are a lot of factors over here, but the pay is definitely better. There is no doubt about it. Okay. Definitely. Uh, See, so you, you have gone there as a master's in periodontics, mm -hmm. okay, as a specialist. Yes. So are you allowed to do only periodontal procedures or how is it? How does the privilege system work there? See, the privilege system works is that if I have a perio license, I should strictly practice perio. Now it depends on the clinic which is hiring you. I got hired in a clinic, thankfully, in a place where they allowed me to do general dentistry only because of my experience of running my own practice. Now, I'm not so well versed with root canals. So what I do now is that I do composite fillings, I do restorations, I do single root root canals, but not multiple teeth root canals, multiple rooted root canals. Okay. But uh, it depends on the clinic which is hiring you and what advantage you are giving to the clinic in comparison to the other other person who is applying for the same position 
So if I am pitted against a periodontist who is only offering perio and I am offering perio plus something else. So definitely the clinic will favor me because I'm offering something else. So yes, you can practice something else, but you should be sure that you're not doing any complications because if any complication occur, you plus the clinic will come under problem because your license is only for perio, but you're in, you are doing general dentistry. Now you have not done well in general dentistry. So you will be questioned that since you didn't have the license for it, why did you do it? So if you think that you cannot do general dentistry well, so stick to the specialization you are in rather than, you know, going for everything. So now you have got into the system as a periodontist with a period privilege. Yes. Can you apply for a general dentistry yes, uh, privilege there? I can. Taking out there? I can. If I want two licenses, one of a period and one of a general dentist, I can again for, appear for the exam. But specifically in my case, I'm not going to appear for the exam because my experience shows me as a person who was running her own clinic and has experience in general dentistry. So if I attend certain courses like root canal courses or something which proves that I'm better in this also, so I will not have to appear for the exam. So if I prove my worth as a general dentist, so I don't think so it is required that you appear for both the licenses. It's better if I appear for DH implant privilege rather than, you know, appearing for general dentistry. Understood. So basically, if you get your implant privilege done, you can even place implants and you can yes. do periodontal practice as well. Yes, and okay. general dentistry. Understood. So is there any advice to the people who are planning to take your route? after BDS or after MDS? What would be your suggestion if they're thinking of coming to Dubai? See, first thing is that uh, you cannot immediately come. You at least have to wait for three years, right? So in those three years, you just carve a niche for yourself first in your home country because it's it, not to sound rude or brutal, but if you cannot really do well in your home country, how are you supposed to do well in a foreign country among people who are not even of your nation? Okay, if you think that Understood. you have competition in your home country, so how will you deal with the competition with other nationals? So first is rise above the competition, you know, do well in your home country. First is that you shouldn't jump onto the chance of leaving the country. I jumped onto this chance because of personal reasons. Professionally, yeah. everything was good. Okay, so if you're doing well in your home country, maybe you even don't want to leave it. But again, if you are starting with the intention of you know i want to leave it so be excellent in whatever you do document your cases because whichever clinic is going to hire you they're not going to take your word for it you know ah i can do root canals excellent root canals i can do perio surgeries i can place implants show it show it sure. so if you have nothing to show it's nothing because here every document counts, every document, everything is written. Even the patient's communication is written. Then what did I tell the patient? After every patient goes, I have to enter the notes. That what happened? What did I tell the patient? What did I suggest the patient? So my first suggestion is excel in whatever you are doing in your home country first. Okay. For not just one year, two years, for complete three years. And after three years, if you're very sure that, no, I have to do it then you can, of course, come over here, document your cases because the more cases you have, the genuine cases, okay? Not just that, you know, on the resume you have, ah, I can do this, 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 this. But when the actual patient comes over here, I'm like, okay, I cannot find the MB2. <laughs> Understood. So you should be confident about your procedures and you should be confident you can treat patients regularly. Yes. Only and then you should take the leave. Documentation Understood. is important. Perfect. Uh, thank you for your time to come here and advise the young dentists. I'm sure they'll get a lot of knowledge from what you have spoken. Thanks a lot. Thank you.